Hi, it's Stu uh, from 3B, of course, and today we're going to be continuing our sort of series on ultra short throw projectors. Now, previously in this, the first video, we sort of looked at before you buy things to consider. So it was sort of pretty obvious things, really, in some regards. Do your research, afford the best you can, look for lumens, um, consider the area in which it's going to be projected onto and what you would need and the size you want that projection to be and how far your uh, ultra short throw projector will need to be from the wall uh, to get that size uh, look for laser projection um, don't bother with the inbuilt speakers or the apps and make sure it allows for warp control to adjust the image so those are the things we talked about previously and today we're going to talk about additional things that you will need to get the best from your ultra short throw projector so let's get on with that shall we so today we're going to talk about the things that you're going to need to get the best from your ultra short throw projector the key thing that you're going to want and and it's expensive that there's just no way of getting around it you can't cheap out on these things once you start to invest in an ultra short throw projector it pretty much starts to become a bit of a money pit but the thing you will really need and you will thank me for it in months to come when you're watching it and you're just constantly in awe at what you're seeing is an ambient light reflective screen now, an ALR screen is a very special, a very particular type of screen developed for ultra short throw projectors. You cannot use an ambient light reflective screen with a normal projector because it will just <laughs> literally look, look awful and basically wash out the entire image. So what is an ambient light reflective screen? Well, it's a very taut, very tight screen you can get them like the one i've got it rises up out of the ground and it's got like sort of fishing wire on the sides to keep it very taut and tight so they're like triangular lenses that go across the entire length of the screen and there's millions of them so you've got millions of these little sort of uh, shaped sort of triangular lenses and the top surface is grayed out so when you look at the screen, the actual screen looks grey. And that's partly because the top of the surface on these tiny, tiny little lenses that are there, these reflective sort of mirrors, um, it's not lenses, it's more of a mirror, I guess, is greyed out. And what that does, any ambient light coming from the top or the surrounding area, but predominantly from the top, is absorbed and not shown on the screen but the light that's coming up from from below that's hitting that sort of reflective area of that uh, lens or mirror or reflective surface whatever you want to call it bounces back the light so when you're sat down and you're watching the screen you're getting all the lumens back at you as much as possible and any ambient light is being caught by the top of this surface in these very very fine lines there's millions of them throughout the entire uh, width and height of the screen now these are not cheap the one i've got is admittedly quite huge it's three meters wide and uh maybe a couple of meters high and that cost me two thousand pounds and I'm glad that I invested that money on that because it it is it has just been such a godsend. Um, yeah. So an ALR screen. Do not try and project it onto a wall because a wall surface, no matter how perfect you think it is, just will not be flat enough. It just will not. The reason being is that. If you have an image that's being projected from up back less than a meter away any slight imperfection is going to be amplified a million times it's not so too bad when you have a projector that's from a distance away projecting onto it because those kind of imperfections are ironed out because of the 
the, the different way it's projected onto the screen. So do not buy a normal projection screen to then use with an ultra short throw projector because it will it will not be pretty. It will not be pretty. It will not be pretty. Much like what I said there. So an ALR screen. The next thing is to consider is uh, high quality short run HDMI cables. So don't have huge lengths, no more than I would say uh, three meters or so uh, for your HDMI cables. You really want the best quality that you can afford. Ideally, if you can get optical HDMI, even better. Uh, make sure that they're 2.1 or at least sort of 2.1 or, well, yeah, you, you, want, you want that really. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so HDMI, we talked about HDMI, get 2.1 if you can, and it all depends on what you can project, your, project, your projector can handle and your AVR can handle. Ideally, if you have an AVR, get an AVR. That's the thing we we're going to talk about next. See, I do know what I'm talking about, honest. Um, the, uh, don't... Uh, don't cheat, you know, if you're investing this much in uh, your sort of cinema and your TV experience, don't cheap out uh, and just rely on the speakers that are in the front of the, the ultra short throw projector. Because, you know, yeah, they're good, they're okay, but you want that cinema experience. So, you know, just spend a bit on getting an AVR, plug in all your sources into that AVR and then have your AVR feed the projector that's what I would recommend you will thank me for it later it may cost you a bit more money to begin with but you will be very grateful and very thankful that you did that um, so those are the sort of the things that you will need an ambient light reflective screen you can get ones that sort of roll up and hide like I've got down here or you can have permanent fixtures they're not cheap but they're a worthwhile investment same too for decent HDMI cables and also making sure you've got a fairly decent AVR amp to plug all your sources in along with speakers of course um, to, to watch and listen to everything through onto your projector. Trust me, it's a worthwhile investment and something you really should be consider, considering. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, we'll be talking next about whether an ultra short throw projector can actually replace your TV and what you should be thinking of in that regard. Uh, the answer is yes, it can, but there are some key things. So that'll be in the next video. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It doesn't matter which, it's your opinion. Make sure you subscribe um, and click the bell so you're notified of when the next video is out. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you very soon. Take good care. Bye-bye.